sound of concentration. I won't get the surplus one out. Okay, so going for these three. I have noticed on quite a few YouTube videos where people just batter away and keep pouring more and more solder on using a filthy iron. And I just won't do it. These things are hard enough to solder. I mean, no apologies, this is a cheap iron. I need a much better one, but they're so expensive now. I wish I still had my old temperature controlled weller and a choice of bits and I can solder anything with that. That is sticking up. Not enough solder. Must have missed that one. Oh, sugar. Just ricocheted across the desk. Oh, come on, behave yourself. Excuse me. <sighs> Over time you develop a feel that you've sold correctly. Unfortunately on this sort of board, because it's double sided and you can't really trace these tracks anywhere because they go through, it's multi layer board. There's no way I can trace to where they actually go to check the continuity. Uh, you just have to develop a feel for the fact that you've done it right. Okay, so there's now a transistor. And inevitably, they've sent me more than one transistor. They've sent me two. But there is only one transistor. And transistors have three pins. It's the only component that has three pins. So I'm quite happy about that. And this one is going to go in position Q. There's a voltage regulator as well. This is going in position Q1, and that's the voltage regulator that goes in position U2. And the voltage regulator is there, it's much bigger. Here's Q1. Try and keep everything in shots. Let me just check, yeah. Quite difficult to uh, work with everything where I can see it and solder it, and you can see it as well. So we don't always get it right. 
don't think any channel ever gets it completely right. Come on. Turn the right way up, you flipping transistor. There we go. So Q1. Ow! Burnt my hand. And he stinks too. It's amazing how easily skin burns. Not very pleasant at all. Q1, where are you? We found you before. The single pin is normally the collector. We're not going to worry about why. We're just going to try and Hold it. Am I happy? Mm. I'm getting happier. I'd be even happier if this works when I switch it on. Can we go straight to the voltage regulator? So the Panasonic camera ran out of batteries because I bought it as a small one because I bought it for a specific project. And this is the Sony camera. It's a compact camera. And I don't think I've ever managed to flatten the batteries doing a video, but this time yet. Now while I'm soldering that, and I've just made a lie out of what I was about to say, while I was soldering that big tag, I'm trying to make sure that these line up on the other side. And now it's floating in midair. Oh. Because it's a big tag, there's a lot more thermal inertia. So it stays hotter, longer. It takes longer for the solder to set as well. It's really a good idea to count to about five before you let go. Come to me, little regulator. I don't think we need to have a second bite. Oh yeah we do. If the flux goes very grey looking, the solder, it's a good idea just to reflow it. Grey coloured solder, that dull grey effect that you get when it's not shiny, is a good indication that you might have a dry joint. What's a dry joint? A dry joint is where the solder is not completely molten and it crystallises and it's possible to have quite a high resistance joint. That is what that's about. Oh, okay. And the next thing are the LED1, LE2. Oh, hang on, Q1. I'm not doing it in the exact order that they say, not to worry because they want me to do the two big chips and I want to do those last. Hey, according to that there's three chips. One, two. Hmm. I only see two chips. Oh, because you, t you choose the regulator. They're counting that as a chip. So U3 is a clock chip and U1 is a 44 pin microcomputer. That should say microprocessor. As with all things that come from China, the English is a bit dodgy. Okie dokie, so we now need the two LEDs. Guess what? We have three. No complaints there. Not sure what I'm going to save an LED for. 
especially when it's so tiny I can't see it. We will do the polarity test. Using the multimeter. Oh, you little swine. Decided to leap up and jump across the desk. This is another advantage of working on a, this dark green craft mat. That you've got a nice flat surface, which is relatively uh, relatively unmodified by dust and dirt, and it's easy to keep clean. Okay, here comes the meter. I'll bring the meter in so you can see it. And the point of the exercise is that when we get the terminals on the right way around, they should light up. Oh, they are blue, aren't they? So both of these have got the positive to the right, just to prove there reads no resistance that way. This way, it not only lights up pretty blue, Oh, it's actually not measuring any resistance. Let's try it on a different range. And then the voltage drops on that range. So I'm not getting a reading, but we know that that is positive. That's the important thing. You should only do this with a digital meter. Just trying it at all the ranges just to see what happens. So it's only the last two ranges 2000 ohms, 200 ohms, and the diode range. The diode, that one being the one that beeps. So positive is at the top. Now then, is there any indication as to in the instructions as to which is positive? There it is. I'll let you see this. Welding ice blue LED. Mm. No welding is required. Pay attention to the LED cathode, which is the end of the green point. Okay, so what we measured was the anode. So the cathode is going to the octagonal fat pad, as shown below. So that's the octagonal pad, that's the square one. And it, we want the anode to be the positive. So we've got the positive on the one that is not. Okay, I can barely see the thing, so let's have a magnification. Okay, so if you can see it, and I'm struggling to see it, that is slightly octagonal and that one is definitely square. Octagonal and square. I'll just remove the magnifying glass in case you can't see through it. So Octagonal pad, square pad, octagonal pad, bleh, pad, square pad. So I want my positives to go here and here. Will we be lucky? I'm trying to strike a balance between getting this done before the battery runs out and making mistakes. You need a heck of a magnifying glass on these to ascertain which end was positive. So it's important that it overhangs the other pad. I'll resolve that again, reflow as they say these days. So actually now they can cool quite gradually. 
Lovely. Next to the welding microphone. I don't know if this camera's focusing on time yet. Yeah, there's something happening. Okay. So the microphone needs the positive the right hand pin. Next to the welding microphone, there is a negative electrode on the back of the microphone with three leads connected to it. No, no, there isn't. There are two leads. And the negative electrode corresponds to the pad on the white point dot. Okay. Spread these a little wider. So this right hand pin has got to go to the and now we're into the realm of through through the whole components. So we need to install this from this we need to solder it from this side. Relationship to talk with balance more evenly. So what I've just done is to mount this microphone and this USB socket. I'll just go back to the page that I was on. So yeah, the microphone has to have this right hand terminal to so the one dotted. You can't see it now because I've soldered it. And then the same with the USB socket. Now it's important that you mount these on the same side that the chips are on. I managed to get it wrong with the microphone. And it was lucky that I only did it with the microphone because the USB socket would have been a bugger to get out. I've also cut the surplus from the mounting brackets because I know that this is quite closely mounted once you put the LEDs on. Everything fits really tight. Okay, so that's the USB socket done, and I've just moved to this buzzer, and the buzzer has to have the positive facing down, but it's on the other side of the board. We can see because it's got L1, L2 here, L1, L2, so that's the positive for that. Now the microphone is important polarity wise because it's an electric microphone or a condenser microphone and it uses a small voltage to polarise it. Now the other thing that I have heard about this is that this battery holder has to be mounted very flush to the board. So it's a surface mount one obviously and again I'm just checking that it de definitely goes on this side. So just tacking it initially. Soldering for real. Now because it's a huge lump of metal compared to the size of the components we've just been welding. Sorry, soldering. Welding. Bzzzt. Uh, we can let the heat run in a little bit more than that. But I may even have one of these batteries in my drawer. It didn't come supplied. But hey ho.